Hey guys, and welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATselfprep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Dalton, 100th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be working through this problem with you as though you're one of my private tutoring students. Today's practice problem comes from the end of lesson mastery quiz in lesson three of the biochemistry two module. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. All right, guys, so in order to really ace this question, we need to have a good understanding of fatty acid synthesis. And it's good to know all the details of this process. Khan Academy has some great videos on this that you can find in the e-course on mcatselfprep.com. But today, I just wanna talk about the overview, the big picture, because that's what we need to know for this problem. Overview, big picture, we're basically trying to take acetyl-CoA that, as we know, is an important part of the process that's going on in here in the mitochondria, where we're taking glucose, breaking it down, getting the acetyl-CoA in here and doing the citric acid cycle, right? So acetyl-CoA is an important part of what's going on in the mitochondria. Our goal here is to convert it into a fatty acid. We want to take these acetyl-CoA building blocks, make them into a fatty acid. First though, in order to get it out of the mitochondria and into the cytoplasm, we need to convert it into citric acid or citrate. Because remember, if we're talking about an, an acid with, with this kind of acid, we'll say like acetic acid, for instance, versus acetate, acetate's the ion. That means we're losing these H's here. So it's O minus. But that happens a lot in the body. It's essentially still the same molecule. In a similar way, citric acid is essentially the same molecule as citrate. We're just losing these protons here. So it says citric acid in this picture, but essentially citrate is what we're dealing with. Citrate's going to come out here and then once we get it back into acetyl-CoA, then we can get to this really important step here. And this is the step that your question is talking about. This is the CoA, acetyl-CoA carboxylase step right here. And you can remember the name of an enzyme really well by remembering what it does. So we're adding a carboxyl group onto this acetyl-CoA in order to get malonyl-CoA. And so it makes a lot of sense that the enzyme here would be called acetyl-CoA carboxylase. And this is a really important step. After this, through a series of different steps, we'll eventually get down to the fatty acid. But there's a couple of important regulation things happening here that I really want you to understand. First off, let's talk about insulin versus glucagon. These are important hormones that we talk about a ton when we're studying for the MCAT. Insulin is what our body releases when we have lots of glucose in the bloodstream. Maybe I just ate a ton of food, I'm doing good, and so it tells the body, hey, cells, bring in this glucose, let's use this stuff, let's store this stuff, we've got plenty, we can make some glycogen, we can store this as fatty acids, there's lots of different things we can do. We have plenty of extra energy and extra glucose floating around. On the other hand, glucagon, excuse me, I think I might have said glycogen earlier, but glucagon right here, that's, I like to think of it as glucose gone. So glucagon is what happens when we don't have enough glucose. It's been a long time since we ate. We don't have a lot of glucose in the blood. So it tells our body, hey, break down our stores. Stop making new stores. Break down the stores we have. Fatty acids, glycogen. Break this stuff down because we need energy ASAP. So that's what's going on here. So insulin, as you might imagine, insulin is what's going to tell our body like, hey, let's get some more fatty acids built. Glucagon is going to be the opposite. It's going to decrease the fatty acid synthesis that's going on. It's going to inhibit it. On the other hand, another type of regulation that we have going on here is we have two molecules that are an important part of this process. Citrate, which we talked about, and the fatty acids themselves right here. So you can imagine if you have a ton of fatty acids floating around, our body's not necessarily going to want to make more fatty acids. Like if you're making lunch for your family, you're making burgers, you make 5, 10, 15 burgers all piling up on the counter, That's you're going to see all that and you're going to say, okay, I don't need to make any more. I can stop now, right? On the flip side, citrate's like a precursor in this process. It's a pre-step. So it's like if you're sitting at home and you're needing to make lunch and you realize, oh my gosh, I've got a ton of buns out on the counter. I've got a ton of patties on the freezer. That might trigger you to say, hey, okay, I'm going to make some burgers. Same thing here. If we have a ton of fatty acid end product built up, it's going to inhibit this process. It's going to slow down this step up here. On the other hand, if we have a lot of citrate, that's going to be an activator for this step. That's gonna, we're gonna wanna use this step more and get more fatty acid because we have a bunch of precursors here. Now that we know that, let's go back to this problem and see what we can figure out. All right, so we wanna know which of these molecules activates acetyl-CoA carboxylase, that important step that we talked about. We've actually already gone through this pretty well. We know that citrate is a precursor and so citrate for sure is going to activate it, like having the ingredients. And then insulin is going to activate it as well because insulin is what we do when we have plenty of glucose floating around. We can build up those stores rather than break them down. So that's one and three. Let's check that out. Awesome. Great work. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. 
For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATselfprep.com. Now, if you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to check out our elite tutoring services and request a free consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how we can help you maximize your MCAT score. We look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.